All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about cross-domain evaluation. So I'm just talking about evaluation in the scope of biomedical event extraction. So this paper in 2020. Biomedical event extraction is a crucial task in in order to automatically extract information from the increasingly growing body of biomedical literature. Despite advances in the methods in recent years, most event extraction systems are still evaluated in domain and on incomplete event structures only. This makes it hard to determine the performance of intermediate stages of, of the task, such as edge detection across different corpora. Motivated by these limitations, we present the first cross-domain study of edge detection for biomedical event extraction. This paper in 2020. So we analyzed differences between five existing gold standard corpora, create a standardized benchmark corpus, and provide a strong baseline for edge detection. Experiments show a large drop in performance when the baseline is applied on out-of-domain data, confirming the need for domain adaptation methods for a task. So when you have source domain, you have target domain, then you have a, we call it domain shift problem. Domain shift problem. And for this, we use in transfer learning, we, take, we use the technique of domain adaptation. So it's a middle layer. Uh, even nowadays, when you want to fine tune, instead of fine tuning, we do uh, adaptation. Uh, it's, a, it's a new paradigm instead of so it's an alternative to fine-tuning pre-trained models but this uh, it, uh, this domain adaptation it depends on the context some people it, they mean that they are using it for to remove the domain shift problem some people mean in order to make it more make interfaces uh, to make it more flexible for for uh, for training uh, so it depends different it means different meanings different in depending on the different context so in this example you see the classification stages in event extraction first uh, people usually do trigger detection detection like a pipeline because it's very easy then edge detection but the problem of this one is that all the errors here if you have, for example if you have predicted the wrong trigger then everything else will be destroyed in edge detection your edge detection is susceptible to upstream but um, that's why many uh, papers try to learn it jointly so this is less error prone and this is a better paradigm in comparison to the old style. Of course, nothing is perfect. Each one has pros and cons. So standardized training and test data for edge detection for five different gold standard corpora enabling cross-domain experimentation together with the characterization of differences between the corpora. And the second contribution is that it's a model for edge detection based on recent advances in neural methods, setting it as a strong baseline for future research. And the third contribution is a thorough experimentation of edge detection in a cross-domain setting, quantifying the drop in performance of baseline methods. So this is the linguistic aspects and the number of documents in the biomedical event extraction. Uh, for example, in January 2011, that I've explained in previous lectures, it's about reactions, about transcription factors in human blood cells. 
and it has uh, been used for abstract and full text, but mainly abstracts. So we have we use 800 for training and for development 150 for test 260. Different uh, textual scope can mean different domains. For example, it could be epigenetic and post-translational medicine modification, and it could be mechanisms of infectious diseases. So we cast the edge detection problem as a multi-class classification problem where the labels to be predicted are theme, cause, location, and knowledge. We employ a convolution or neural network. Simpler thing that you can think, convolution or neural network. Following its recent success in biomedical event extraction. The neural network is composed of an input layer, a convolutional layer, a max pooling layer, and a classification layer. To introduce a nonlinearity, we use ReLU activation nonlinearity, except the output layer, which uses softmax. So, given a sentence containing candidate edge, an example is modeled as its sequence of tokens. Each token, T sub A, T sub i is, is turned into real valued vector representation x sub i, representing its different syntactic and semantic characteristics. So we do word embedding, position embedding, type embedding, part of speech embedding, and most importantly, dependency embedding, because we use the path embeddings encoding the shortest dependency path from each token to this uh, token to the source and target tokens of the edge candidate for example there is a path between them through this and so because you are doing edge detection for example we want to know what is the cause or what is the theme of that we use convolutional neural network for that. And there is an ablation study in all ACL papers. It means that we want to see what is the effect of one thing. For example, if you just use some idea or you just ignore that idea or just use the baseline. We want to see the effect of that, the change of that. So the experiment shows, I mean, the ablation study shows that the most informative input embedding is this dependency, which individually contrib contributes to 1.96 uh, F1 score. After that, your type is important. After that, part of speech was important. So the main important thing is dependency.